All right, so let's talk about troubleshooting tankless water heaters. And we're going to start with the most common call, which is no hot water. That's right, Jerry. And, and a no hot water may not present with a code. So we okay. may have flow that's coming out of a fixture, but it's cold, the water heater's not operating. Right. So, you know, we're going to make sure that we have no hot water throughout the house, obviously. But we're going to go to the water heater, and that's the first thing we're going to do, right? Uh, that's, it, that is. For the first thing we're going to make sure is that it's not just one fixture. If it's one fixture and we have hot water at the other fixtures, mm -hmm. then we've got a fixture problem. Okay. Uh, but if it's consistent across all the fixtures in the home, yeah, we want to go to the water heater. And one of the things that we want to do is isolate the plumbing system from the water heater to make sure that the water heater is or is not working. Okay, so we're going to isolate the water heater and make sure that, that, that it's actually coming through the water. Like, it can mean that our, our lines are reversed? Yeah, we may have a recirculation line that uh, doesn't have a check valve, or okay. we may have our hot and cold connections reversed, um, or we may have another cartridge that's in a shower that's allowing a cross connection, so it's easier for water to flow through something else instead of through all the restriction in the heater itself. Okay. So once we've determined, you know, that we've got it all hooked up, what, is, what do we need to be doing? Right, well, the first thing is definitely make sure that the hot and cold are connected correctly. Because okay. if we connect those in reverse, and it's easy to do sometimes when you get in a rush, right. water will still flow through the heater, but the flow sensor will only detect flow if it's flowing in the proper direction. And so okay. if it's backwards, it's not going to detect flow in the water heater won't operate. Okay, and that's because of the way the flow sensor is designed? That is. It's the way the flow sensor is designed. And coming in, we've got a little uh, holder here that's holding the uh, impeller in place mm -hmm. and those have a little bit of a slant to them and they put a spin on the water as it comes through here and that's what actually turns the uh, turns the wheel okay and coming back the other way there's no spin on the on the brackets that hold it on the back side so that would, would yeah so it wouldn't spin the impeller you would never see flow correct okay so that's one of the things that can happen so how can we check that so what we want to do is first, of course, make sure that hot and cold are uh, connected correctly, or at least we think they're connected correctly. Mm -hmm. Now with the cold water valve open on the isolation kit, we're just going to turn off the hot water valve. Okay. And that way we know cold water is coming into the heater. And so if we open up the pressure relief valve, if it's safe to put that somewhere where it's not going to harm anything by leaking, okay. uh, if we don't want to do that, then we can hook up a hose to our service port. Mm -hmm and then we can open this valve, and that's going to allow water to flow through the heater, and we know then that it's coming and it's flowing the right way. Okay, and if you don't have water coming out, then you know you've got it backwards. And you've got your way. connections backwards. Or... It's easy for us because we've got red and blue here. Yeah, we've color-coded <laughs> these uh, to make it easy, but that goes to say exactly how easy it is to accidentally get these yeah. reversed. So once we do that and we can get flow going through the water heater and flow is either coming out of our pressure relief valve mm -hmm. or out of our service port uh, through our hose, the water heater should come on and operate. And okay. if it does come on and operate, then when we have flow, we know that the water heater is working correctly. Okay. And that could be just something downstream of the water heater? It could be something downstream. And what this does is this prevents uh, any water from coming backwards through the water heater if we have a cross connection or we're missing right. a check valve. Okay. All right. So what's the next, what's our next step? What, what's the next thing we can do to check for no hot water? Well, if it does come on and operate when we do mm -hmm. that, it's not a water heater problem. The water heater is working properly. Right. We need to diagnose the plumbing system. And there could be many things that's involved yeah. with that. And you'll have to go through and, and isolate those. But if we have flow through the water heater and the heater still doesn't fire, mm -hmm. then we have a problem actually detecting the flow. Okay. Okay. And one of the first things that we want to do is take that filter out. And this is located right where the cold water goes into the water heater and this mm -hmm. just screws out and there's a little basket strainer that's on that filter. Okay. And if there's any debris on this filter, we want to rinse it with some clean water, get this clean. This can either prevent water from going through the heater altogether or it could prevent from spinning when it hits those blades that hold the impeller in place. Now on a new installation, is it recommended to, to, change, to uh, check this right after installation or maybe a day or two after? Maybe a day or two after and it depends because when we do a new installation, we've move the plumbing pipes mm -hmm. around and some of the things that have collected on the inside might break loose and they can get collected in this filter. Okay. Another time is if they're doing any other plumbing rep repairs in the home or maybe mm -hmm. even out there the water company is doing some repairs, that can dislodge some sediment and allow this to collect in here. So this yeah. would be the first thing we want to check because we want to make sure that the water heater can flow water correctly. Okay. All right, so once we've done that, is there anything else we need to, to think about when we're getting no hot water? I mean, could, is it going to be one or the other or one of the that or, or cross connection? Well, that or cross connection, once we get this cleaned out and put that back in, if we're mm -hmm. still having the same problem, we're still getting flow through the heater but it's not uh, coming on, then we're looking at our flow okay. sensor itself. Yeah. And a flow sensor is located right behind this user interface module and there's two clamps that hold this in place. Okay. Now we want to make sure that the water's off before we take these clamps off so we don't have any water damage or spray <laughs> yeah. any water. That would not uh, be nice. But this is a pretty easy thing to check. We're just going to blow through it. <sighs> 
and we should be able to see the impeller spin there. Okay. So if we can't blow through it or if the impeller doesn't spin, we need to replace this. Okay, so we'll have to replace this if it's not spinning. If it's not spinning. Okay, so we'll, we would remove the two, two clamps. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, once you remove the bottom clamp and the, and the side clamp, just lift it up and over and it should come out uh, pretty quick. So that's an easy way to check uh, just to make sure that, the, that, that, we're, that we're getting um, uh, water flowing through there and it's actually detecting it. Can we use the, the control uh, and, and see if our gallons per minute is, is actually working while you do that? Yeah, absolutely. But one thing that we want to do though is push the on off button here on the control mm -hmm. so that the orange light goes into a standby mode. Okay. And what that will do is we still can look at our diagnostic information mm -hmm. and with the flow sensor removed but still connected to the control board, when we blow through that and it spins the impeller, we should see some flow that's registered here. Okay. And if the impeller spins but we don't see any flow that's registered here, we can unplug these connections, okay. plug them back in, and that will clean the electrical connections, okay. uh, and that will take care of the problem most of the time. <clears throat> and if we still, after doing that, we still don't yeah. see flow, we're, again, we're going to replace the flow sensor. Okay. Anything else we want to add with no hot water? I think that's about it for no hot water. Right. So that's no hot water for tankless water heaters.